Breaking news now. A home invasion turns deadly in South Nashville after a homeowner opens fire on a would-be burglar. Kimberly Davis live with the latest for us. So, Kimberly, the homeowner really just protecting himself, right? Amy, so far that's still under investigation this morning. I spoke with a captain with Metro Police and he's saying if it clears all of the investigations, they're saying he will not be charged. But right now that's still up in the air as whether or not he will or will not be charged. This is what we know so far. Take a look at the video from last night when police responded to this home on the 15,000 block of Old Hickory Boulevard in Nashville. We're told an intruder entered a man's home. He didn't know who he was, didn't know why he was there, but he shot that man. That man ended up dying there at the scene. When police arrived, all they had to go off of was that homeowner's word. So everything is still under investigation. Once police finish with their part, they will be handing over this case to the attorney general, excuse me, um, district attorney's office, and they will complete this investigation. So far, they're saying they're still working on identifying who this man was. It's still very early in the investigation, but we will continue to follow it and bring you new information as soon as it becomes available. For now, we are live in Nashville. Kimberly Davis, News Channel 5. Kimberly, thank you very much. And new this morning, a woman is behind bars after a traffic stop uncovers a secret stash of drugs. Alexandra Cohen joins us with the very latest on this. And we're talking a lot of marijuana, aren't we? Steve, 310 pounds of marijuana to be exact. And I have a sergeant right now working to gather more information for me on this investigation. But here is what we know right now. Deborah Bereleza was pulled over by the Tennessee Highway Patrol and consented to a search of her vehicle. According to the affidavit, she was the suspect involved in a long-term marijuana distribution case. She was pulled over as part of that investigation, and she allowed police to search her car. Again, they came up with 310 and 10 pounds of pot. The woman was arrested for possession with intent to sell marijuana. I have put in a request for that mugshot. I just refreshed my email and we don't have it yet, but hopefully we'll bring it to you as soon as it becomes available. Reporting live in Nashville, Alexandra Cowood, News Channel 5. Thank you, Alexandra. An act of terrorism hits the Vanderbilt community. A graduate student was stabbed to death during a violent attack while on a school trip to Israel. Police say a Palestinian man went on a stabbing spree in the city of Jaffa near Tel Aviv, killing 28-year-old Taylor Force and injuring six others. The attacker was then shot and killed by Israeli police. Force was in Israel for a spring break trip to learn about global entrepreneurship and meet with local startup companies before starting Vanderbilt's MBA program. Force graduated from West Point and served two tours in both Iraq and Afghanistan. Vanderbilt is now working to get its other students and faculty on that trip back home safely. A murder mystery going on this morning in Dixon. Police say a 51-year-old woman was found dead yesterday afternoon in her, in her home in the 800 block of East Railroad Street. Her name has not yet been released, nor how she died. So far, no arrests have been made. We are told, though, there are several persons of interest, so we'll continue to watch this story and update information as it becomes available. Several suspected drug dealers are off the streets after a major bust. The TBI says five men were arrested in Davidson County in connection to a nearly two-year-long investigation into a drug trafficking organization. Investigators say the men sold heroin, heroin laced with fentanyl, and marijuana. We're told the investigation started after several overdoses in Cheatham County. Former Metro Council member Lonel Green Jr. heads to court today. He's charged with trying to coerce a victim in a domestic assault case involving his cousin to not testify. Green resigned over the scandal back in January. His position in District 1 will be filled by another council member until a special election can be held in August. However, one resident has filed a lawsuit against Metro saying August is too long to wait. Officials say they're only following state laws. We understand those, those concerns. However, we have state laws that govern how we proceed with each election. So whatever or whenever an election is held, we are going to follow statutes, we're going to follow procedure, we're going to follow with the guidance with the state coordinator of elections office. 
Candidates wishing to run for that vacant council seat have until April the 7th to file their proper paperwork. Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton face off once again in a debate tonight in Florida, ahead of the state's winner-take-all primary next week. While the Vermont senator regained momentum with a crucial primary win in Michigan last night, Clinton picked up even more delegates with a win in Mississippi. Republican frontrunner Donald Trump racked up wins in both states, plus Hawaii. Meanwhile, Ted Cruz won in Idaho. A live look right now at Bridgestone Arena this morning where the SEC men's basketball tournament will be tipping off a little bit later today. Yesterday, the crews were working around the clock on the final preps. It's not the first time the SEC championship has been in town, and it won't be the last either. The Nashville Sports Council and SEC have an agreement to host the conference's men's or women's tournaments for the next 10 years. That is great economic news for Nashville. All right, the first teams to hit the court today, Tennessee and Auburn. Tip time, 7 p.m.